March 1865, the great war between the states raged toward its climax as the Union forces encircled and besieged the vital city of Richmond. Fields and highways of Virginia, the armies of North and South locked in mortal combat. The federal web was spun ever closer to the doomed city, planned and executed by a brilliant officer of the engineers, Captain Cyrus Harding. Captain Harding? Correct. Colonel Brick, sir. Headquarters wants another forward observing point constructed. I'll have to locate a spot for it. They must think we engineers carry Aladdin's lamp. Well, don't we? <laughs> Take charge here. Men, I'd like two volunteers for a scouting mission. <laughs> I said two. Norton, Conway, come with me. up to something. Send word down, intercept them. No choice. Follow me. You are, of course, required to give only your name and rank. Still, we'd be very appreciative if you could supply us with certain other information. I must decline. However, I don't suppose you'd be willing to tell me how the presence of my small detachment was discovered so quickly. You were seen from an observation balloon. I suspected that was it. May I have your parole? No, Major. I'll escape if the opportunity offers. So would I. But you'll have as much trouble leaving Richmond as we would. Lieutenant, see that Captain Harding is supplied with suitable quarters. Yes, sir. This way, Captain.
sure hope he's home. Mr. Jackson, this is Captain Harding, the prisoner of war. The provost marshal said that you'd have quarters for him. Mr. Jackson? I'm not very interested in having a Yankee in my house. <laughs> Well, what have we here? Hello, fella. What's his name? Top. Hello, Top. Yankee or not, that's the first stranger Top ever cottoned up to that way, Captain. Well, perhaps it's a sign you should take me in. Maybe you're right. I'm grateful to both you gentlemen. You'd better remove some of your insignia. You might find that everyone in Richmond isn't quite so friendly. I'll do that, but not enough to be mistaken for a spy. Good day, Captain. Here for you, Captain. Thank you. Have you had enough of Richmond, Captain? I've only been here a week, but the answer is yes. Why do you ask? Because I'd like to escape, too. They're Yankee spies, that's what they are. They're Yankees, sure enough. Mm -hmm. If they're Yankees, they'll have money. Yeah. I'm Gideon Spillett, war correspondent for the New York Leader. Oh, yes. You were captured about a month ago in that cavalry raid. That's right. I thought you might know of some way to escape through the lines. I have some friends who'd like to go, too. I'd be happy to join you. As to suggestions. The balloon. Yes. It was the cause of my capture. It'd only be fair if it were to help me escape. There's a small detail of getting aboard it. You're Yankees, aren't you? What of it? What's going on here? These thugs attacked us. They're Yankee spies. They're prisoners of war. And they'll be treated as such. Lock them up. I trust you won't think those renegades represent all of us. Certainly not, Lieutenant. And thanks for your timely help. Well, glad to be of aid, sir. As a matter of fact, I came to check on you. Lucky you did. I guess I'd better remain indoors from now on. We intend to keep order in the city, if not outside it. My thanks also. Captain? Bring your friends to my room tonight. It's the rear of the Jackson house across the square. We'll be there. Good. Richmond, huh, Captain Hardy? That scarcely expresses it. How'd you get here? Through both the Yankee and Rebel lines. I started as soon as I heard they'd taken you. How'd you find out where I was? Well, some of the servants around here do anything for a little chew of tobacco. And that's not all. Well, I'll be doggone. This is apt to come in handy. Captain Hardy. Come in. This is Ned, Mr. Spillett. He's been with me as long as I can remember. Hello? The others are outside. Fine, have them come in. These are my friends. Gentlemen. Jack Pencroft and Herbert Brown. Pencroft is a sailor. Until a raider put us on the beach. 
Bert here was the son of my skipper. I always like my own lad. I told him about your idea of using the balloon, Captain Harding. We think it's swell. We ran across some information about it. The Confederates mean to use it to get a message out to General Lee. When? Tonight at midnight. But the barometer's been falling since mid-afternoon. And there's a wind of hurricane intensity reported on its way. Then we must act quickly. They may try to take off before the wind strikes. Gentlemen, with your help, this is what I propose to do. Taking off with a hurricane due would be suicide. Don't you think we should wait for a better report? We'll have to see what Colonel Blystone has to say. in all its fury. A great hurricane, the worst ever to strike the Western Hemisphere, swept them along at a speed which man had never known before. nights they were blown southwestward. Not once could they see the earth. Only the two most rugged retained consciousness. Finally, the great storm abated. But now, a new hazard arose as the balloon, cooling rapidly, started losing altitude. Captain! Look! We're falling fast toward the rocks. We've thrown over all the ballast. There's nothing left except... No, Captain, no! Show about my captain, Mr. Pitcroft. I'm afraid we'll never see him again, Ned. I'm a captain.
We're in luck, Captain Shide. The gale has blown our ship back to the island where we left our stores. So I see, Molly. Shall I know the anchor, sir? Not yet. I don't like the looks of what I see. We'll cruise offshore for a while. Where are we? I don't know, but we're in a bad way. Did you find Captain Harding? What's that? Must have been a meteor. Could have resembled none that I ever saw before. It looked like some strange craft from some other planet. I'd like to seek its landing place at some future time. But now we'd better find food and water. What are our chances? Well, there should be something edible among the rocks at the shore. Let's refresh ourselves with that. Then let's head inland and hope there are other humans there. Again, arrived safely on Earth. We will now go to my former workshop. I'm sure this is a water course. We should find some to drink before long. I hope so. After we've refreshed ourselves, we'll return to the beach to search again for Captain Hardy. If he dropped into the water, as you say, he may have survived. At any rate, he sacrificed himself to save us. Is that thunder? There's not a cloud in the sky. It wasn't thunder. Look. It's a volcano. I've seen many such in the South Sea. Then we better not go inland any farther. You're right. We have no choice. Who are they? Must be natives. There's no natives like that on these islands. Yeah, and they don't look very friendly. We'll take our chances with the volcano. This way. The trail leads upward. to be the fate of Captain Harding. What wild island creature is this? Don't miss Sinister Savages, the second thrilling chapter of Mysterious Island at this theater next week.
on the road down there. Those Yankees are up to something. Send word down to intercept them. prisoner, Captain. Looks as though I have no choice. Follow me. You are, of course, required to give only your name and rank. Still, we'd be very appreciative if you could supply us with certain other information. I must decline. Falling since mid-afternoon. There's a wind of hurricane intensity reported on its way. Then we must act quickly. They may try to take off before the wind strikes. Gentlemen, with your help, this is what I propose to do. off with a hurricane do would be suicide. Don't you think we should wait for a better report? We'll have to see what Colonel Blystone has to say. in all its fury. A great hurricane, the worst ever to strike the Western Hemisphere, swept them along at a speed which man had never known before. nights they were blown southwestward. Not once could they see the earth. Only the two most rugged retained consciousness. Finally, the great storm abated. But now, a new hazard arose as the balloon, cooling rapidly, started losing altitude. Captain! Look! 
We're falling fast toward the rocks. We've thrown over all the ballast. There's nothing left except... No, Captain, no! Are you sure about my captain, Mr. Pitcroft? I'm afraid we'll never see him again, Ned. I'm a captain. Captain Shide, the gale has blown our ship back to the island where we left our stores. So I see, Molly. Shall I lower the anchor, sir? Not yet. I don't like the looks of what I see. We'll cruise offshore for a while. Where are we? I don't know, but we're in a bad way. Did you find Captain Harding? What's that? Must have been a meteor. But it resembled none that I ever saw before. It looked like some strange craft from some other planet. I'd like to seek its landing place at some future time. But now we'd better find food and water. What are... Top! <laughs> stolen balloon, the storm struck in all its fury. A great hurricane, the worst ever to strike the Western Hemisphere, swept them along at a speed which man had never known before. nights they were blown southwestward. Not once could they see the earth. Only the two most rugged retained consciousness. Finally, the great storm abated. But now, a new hazard arose as the balloon, cooling rapidly, started losing altitude. Captain! falling fast toward the rocks. We've thrown over all the ballast. There's nothing left except... No, Captain, no!
Are you sure about my captain, Mr. Pencroft? I'm afraid we'll never see him again, Neb. Once another forward observing point constructed. I'll have to locate a spot for it. They must think we engineers carry Aladdin's lamp. Well, don't we? <laughs> Take charge here. Men, I'd like two volunteers for a scouting mission. <laughs> I said two. Norton, Conway, come with me. down there. Those Yankees are up to something. Send word down to intercept them. Thank you. 